was very jealous of the guitar when we were first dating and got engaged, and he paid a lot more attention to the guitar, I felt. So I gave him an ultimatum, it's me or the guitar. And he said, honey, the guitar doesn't have legs, you do. <laughs> he got so upset with him, I took my ring and I threw it at him. <laughs> then I went looking for it. <laughs> and I was one of these late starters in life. I wasn't one of these guys that uh, you read about in the books. You know, you read these articles in Guitar Player Magazine, the guy says, well, when I was 12 years old, I had the chops of a uh, reindeer and all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when I was 12 years old, I was playing marbles myself. I don't know, you know. And when I was 24, I was at Douglas Aircraft, you know, moving boxes and trying to play guitar. I was 24, I was still into this. And, wow, I'm in a seventh position. Whoa, yeah, yeah. And, and I finally learned one hip chord. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not one of them guys you read about. We went to the prom and Ralph Martiri was playing the dance and found out that their guitar player was leaving that night and he tried out, auditioned, and he was hired right then and there. It was on a Friday night and a Saturday night he left for New York City. let go. <laughs> Martiri was going to get a guitar singer so that he could only pay for one guy. He decided he, he knew there was nothing there in Niagara Falls for him. He wanted to go to California to play. While my father struggled to find work playing guitar, he had to make ends meet working in a warehouse. He always said it was the best job he ever had. He hated it so much, it made him practice every day. I was told by two guys, before we left, he's never gonna make it. So after seven months of struggling here, Daddy wanted to go back. And I said, there's no way, because I wasn't giving in to those two guys. <laughs> and that's what Dad said, my stubborn Sicilian wife. In fact, uh, uh, my wife was behind me 100% like all the time I work, and she's, it was, you'd swear she was working. She took the calls, she didn't, never complained. Mm -hmm. I would come in at 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock, I'd see my kids whenever. My mm -hmm. wife accepted it, this was our living. Our mm -hmm. whole family took it exactly that way. Every mm -hmm. once in a while a musician's wife would come and complain to her, mm -hmm. and she'd talk to them. She'd say, well look, that's mm -hmm. his living. Well, mm -hmm. Carmi never talked to Barbara the Barbarian. <laughs> 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 My father would say there are only four reasons to take a gig. For the money, for the connections, for the experience, or just for fun. I gotta tell you a story about your dad. We were in Western Studio 3 there, and uh, Jan Barry, Jan and Dean, he counted the song. Everybody ready? Yeah, okay. Tedesco started playing. And uh, Jan said, stop, wait. He went over and looked, and he said, Tedesco, what are you doing? He, Tommy, the music was upside down and Tommy was reading it backwards. Now that's a true story, but you talk about getting a laugh out of it. Tommy was a cut up. 